Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video. It's been a little while since I've done a sit down and talk to the camera type of thing. The last few videos I've been doing hands-on stuff. Um, if you didn't see last week's video, definitely go check it out. It was my daughter Cassidy's birthday and that was such a fun video to film. A lot of work, <laughs> but it was so much fun to film. So I'm really happy about that one. Today I'm going to be talking about ways that you can fall asleep when anxiety is keeping you up all night. This is something I've struggled with a lot and something I've researched a lot and found a few things that do help me, but it's not always, <laughs> it doesn't always help unfortunately, anxiety is the worst, but these are some things that might help you, I suggest giving them a try, they do help me sometimes, most of the time, but Obviously, there are times when anxiety is a little too strong for our little tricks. So, the first category I'm going to talk to you about is your bedroom's atmosphere. Now, I know this is going to be hard for a lot of people if you live in a bachelor apartment or a really small apartment, but you want to try as much as possible in your bed area not to do anything that isn't meant for the bedroom. So, you don't want to work on your bed. I know it's really hard right now with a lot of people working from home, but try and keep that separate. Don't exercise in your bedroom, just try and keep all non-bedroom related activities, such as sleeping or sex, keep that out of the bedroom. Um, this will help your brain associate your bedroom with sleep and not with work. And it'll be easier to shut off your brain from thinking about work if you don't work in your bedroom if that makes sense. Also, another thing to consider to make your bedroom atmosphere more relaxing and inviting for sleep is to have really nice soft colors, paint the walls. You don't want a bright red or orange color on your walls in your bedroom, but a nice beautiful blue or soft pink or purple would be really good. You also can set the mood with certain, I wouldn't say candles, you don't want flames, especially while you're sleeping, and especially if you have animals. But those little flameless candles maybe, or like a flickering light, those Himalayan salt lamps are, I hear, really popular. I also recommend maybe some calming artwork, um, you know, things that just promote the idea of sleep. Have it in your room and just make it a sanctuary of relaxation. Another thing you can do to create a relaxing environment in your bedroom is to use smell. So things like an essential oil diffuser in your bedroom can be really good. However, if you have pets, look into that. I know lavender is really not safe for cats. I'm not sure about dogs. Um, so I would never diffuse lavender in anywhere in my house. So if you do essential oils, definitely make sure that it's safe for your pets and I would talk to a vet as well. Other things you can do is light scented candles before bed but blow them out before you go to sleep or a scentsy warmer. You want to have very comfortable sheets, blankets, pillows, mattress, okay? You spend hopefully seven to nine hours of your life every day in bed. That's like a third of your life. You deserve to be comfortable. Invest in good bedding. It's an investment that is worth it. You deserve to have good sleep, so make that investment and you won't regret it. It is so great to be comfortable when you're sleeping and it really does help. So one thing that is really challenging for me when I am having a lot of anxiety and I'm trying to sleep is that my brain goes into overdrive and I'm constantly thinking about things. I'm thinking about what that horrible person said to me last week or all the things I have to remember to do tomorrow and just a whole bunch of stuff. Your brain does not turn off and your thoughts can keep you awake. So one thing I love to do when I'm having this problem is use either a sound machine or listen to calming music. So I find that those things kind of drown out the sound of my thoughts, if that makes sense. And sometimes, especially from listening to calming music that has a melody or even lyrics, I find myself paying attention to that a little bit more than I pay attention to my own thoughts. This is also a good idea for those who have anxiety around, 
you know, bad things happening in the night, stuff like that. When you hear, you know, house sounds, the creaks and stuff, you're gonna get anxious, you're gonna get nervous, especially if you don't have a dog in the house. For me personally, if I hear a creak in the house, unless my dog starts freaking out, I'm not assuming there's an intruder in my house. But I know a lot of people, they hear sounds and their instant thought is, there's someone in my house and I'm about to be murdered. That's just how some anxious brains work and it's really, really challenging. So again, a noise machine, music, will kind of damper those noises. It's also why a lot of people use them with babies, so that house noises, people walking around in the house, don't wake up the baby. And I actually use one for my daughter. And what's great is because I have the monitor next to my bed, I have a sound machine on all the time because there's one in her room. <laughs> so I've been finding that very helpful for making me not be so into my thoughts, and I also don't hear the random house noises. So I'm reading off my blog. I did a blog post about this and I'm just referencing it for this video. So I will leave the link to the blog in the description below. But I'm just finding out I got to do some adjustments for mobile on my blog because everything looked great with this post when I previewed it on desktop, but I have a title overlapping some words. So I'm going to have to look into that. Another thing that I do and I've been told this by a lot of people that it is helpful is I keep a notepad by my bed. The reason I do this is sometimes when my thoughts get a little out of control and I'm thinking about you have to do this tomorrow, don't forget to do this tomorrow, or you get a great idea that pops into your head, how many times, I'm talking really fast, I'm sorry, but how many times have you thought of the greatest idea ever when you're about to go to bed and you're like I'm gonna do that tomorrow or I'm gonna remember to do that and then the next morning you're like, I had a great idea, I don't remember what it is. And that's really frustrating. But also sometimes you'll think about it and you'll think, I'm going to forget so I have to keep thinking about it so I don't forget. How am I not going to forget this? And you're just constantly thinking about this idea over and over in your head and you're not sleeping. Or you're thinking about, you know, things that your anxiety is making you think about or telling you you got to remember to do this tomorrow and you know. So if you have a notebook next to your bed, just turn on the little light next to your bed, hopefully on a dim setting, and just write it down. And now that you've written it down, you're like, I won't forget because it is written down. So brain, calm down. I'm fine. I'm not going to forget. Let's chill. And most of the time the brain does. <laughs> I mean, if you're thinking about things that are upsetting you just because your brain feels like being a jerk, then that's not going to help. But if you're having these thoughts of, I can't forget this, I'm going to forget this, I have to remember to do this and this and this tomorrow, and I've got to remember to do this next week, and this tomorrow, and this next month, it's really hard to fall asleep when that is going on. So having a notebook next to your bed to write these things down is very helpful. Don't write it on your phone. I know a lot of people are like, okay, well I have a notepad on my phone. No, don't write it on your phone. Phones, I think I'm going to get to that. I'm pretty sure there's a category for that. Don't use your phone. Use a notebook. So another thing you can try is a weighted blanket. So if you've already invested in some really great blankets and pillows and those are still not cutting it for you, a weighted blanket is a really wonderful thing to try. Just in general, weighted blankets are known to be really helpful for anxiety specifically. And for me personally, I have a small weighted blanket. It's something I keep on the couch downstairs. And I like to put it on if I'm feeling anxious and it really does help. And I've had some wonderful naps under that blanket downstairs in my living room. And I am not a nap person. I've never been a nap person. Sequin, <laughs> what are you doing? So these blankets have been shown to increase your levels of serotonin and melatonin, which are two very important chemicals for getting a really good night's sleep and feeling well rested. This is a really challenging one for me. I don't know why. I just, I always have a hard time doing it. Either thinking to do it or, you know, making myself do it when I do think about it, but that is meditation. I know this gets preached a lot. So I'm not going to talk too long about that one because pretty much everyone is saying meditation, meditation, it's life changing. And yeah, it, I mean, it is for a lot of people. You have to find the method that works right for you. 
it doesn't work the same for everyone and every method is a little different. There's guided meditations you can listen to, there's um, meditations that are very focused on breathing, so you have to, you know, do what works for you. Try a few out. For me, I like to do it after I've gotten into bed. I'm already laying there, I'm having a hard time sleeping, and I'm like, all right, let's do a little bit of meditation. So I do breathing in for four seconds, holding it for four seconds, breathing out for four seconds, and then it's like, I think it's called like box meditation or box breathing or something like that. And while I do that, I try to visualize something relaxing for me. I don't know what it is about water and waves, but I love to visualize like nice big waves or even just soft waves on a lake at sunset. So visualization like that is really helpful as well. And it kind of keeps my inner monologue quiet. Now while you're meditating, the point is to shut off your thoughts and not think about things and just focus on the moment. However, you're going to have thoughts pop into your head. It's almost impossible. People who meditate every day on the regular, like they're expert meditators, they're really the only ones who can do this perfectly. <laughs> so if you have a thought pop into your head, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't say, oh, I failed meditating. I guess I'll never do that again. Just say, okay, I thought about that. Let's, let's move on now and just try and focus back in. That's all I'm going to say on meditation. There's a ton, a ton of resources out there for you. Look into it. It might really work for you. A lot of people are really preaching it. So, Another thing is to read a book. By this I mean an actual book made out of paper. Again, not your phone, not your Kindle, nothing with a screen. And I'm going to get to that in my next point. <laughs> now you do have to be really careful with this one, especially if you are a reader and someone who really enjoys reading. Because if you start reading something really exciting and a real page turner, you're not going to get sleepy. You're just going to get really enthralled in the book and you'll stay up all night reading. So for me, I prefer to use a book that is more informative and less story driven because then I don't get hooked. Another thing you can do too is decide before you start reading, I'm going to read this many pages or until I feel too sleepy, I got to put the book down. And then once you hit this many pages or like I'm going to read two chapters or whatever, then you stop. That's it. And then you try sleeping. It's good because you're going to be focusing and thinking more as you're laying down to sleep about what you just read as opposed to things that you're worried about. So it'll shift your focus and thinking about what the book said hopefully is less likely to keep you awake thinking about it than thinking about that horrible day at work you just had or the stressful day at work you're probably going to have tomorrow. So this is the hardest one for me. And the hardest one for probably most people out there, and that is no screens before bed. Preferably within half an hour before you go to bed. And that is why the reading a book tip is really good because you're not looking at a screen when you're looking at a real book for half an hour before you go to bed. Screens are basically shining light directly at your eyes, whether you're doing it from a phone or a TV or a tablet or whatever. There's so much scientific data out there to prove why that is not good for a good night's sleep. So I'm not going to get too deep into the scientific data about that. You can definitely research that yourself about the light. But the other issue is the content, especially if you are browsing social media. Social media is designed to keep you in it to keep you wanting to know more, to wanting to see more, to wanting to keep scrolling and scrolling. And what's going to happen if during your scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, you see a picture of your ex having fun at a party? Are you going to get a good night's sleep then? I don't think so. And what if you start watching a YouTube video and then when it finishes, the next one automatically starts playing and it looks interesting too? You're not going to just stop watching then. So there's things like that that keep you engaged. And social media, as a lot of you know, is really bad for just mental health in general. That being said, I love social media personally, and I really try and focus on making, oh my god. I really try and focus on not allowing it to affect my mental health, and when it does, I will unfollow certain people, I will, you know, put people on snooze. I've had to do that with certain friends where I've 
been like, I don't want to see them for 30 days. I just need a break from their posts, whether they're posting negative stuff or they're annoying. And one thing a lot of people need to remember too about social media is people are posting their highlights on there. They're not posting about their bad day unless they're a negative person. But people are going to post pictures of their vacation, obviously. They're not going to post pictures of themselves working at their computer for seven hours a day. No one cares about that. No one wants to see that. No one's going to post about that. So when you have a crappy day and then you see someone posting about their big promotion, just know you're only seeing their highlights and you're comparing that to your whole life. So that's something I really try and focus on and remind myself. And that's why I also try on my social media not to post too much of the good, like I do post the good stuff, obviously I want to share that stuff with people, but I do like to be realistic too, so some bad things that go on, I'll post about them and I'll laugh about it. I really try and be real on here and on my social media as well, and I hope that that can be helpful for you guys. I hope that you can be inspired to maybe do the same. I think Facebook, Instagram, all these other platforms, they need a bit more realness, a lot less fakeness. And I just want everyone out there to know that everyone struggles. It's not just you. And it's, it is also the person who is posting about their trip to Bali. Anyway, off of that tangent, <laughs> the next one is no news right before bed. So even if you're looking at a newspaper, don't care, no news before bed, because that is just asking to have things to be worried about or upset about right before you're trying to sleep. And that inner monologue of yours will have a lot of content to be thinking about, and that is not going to be fun for you. Now this also includes shows that are comedy based, but they're still telling you the news, like The Daily Show and Last Week Tonight, shows like that. They're funny. I really enjoy watching them and I do feel informed, but those are not things I need to be informed about right before I'm trying to sleep, especially lately with all of this pandemic talk. It's it's overwhelming and I really think if you try and consume your news earlier in the day, it will be very beneficial for you. And my last point, this can be tough too, but is exercise during the day. Don't do it right before bed, don't get your adrenaline pumping and then hop into bed expecting to fall asleep because that is not going to work for you. But if you exercise during the day, really wear your body out and get yourself really tired during the day, you're going to be able to fall asleep faster. Now exercise is also in general really important for a healthy life. It's good for increasing your mood and helping with a lot of mental illnesses, it's good for your heart your lungs, your just your whole body, but it is very good for helping you get some sleep, especially because exercise is good for helping with mental illnesses. It will help with your anxiety and also help you feel more tired when you go to bed. Now, I'm not suggesting start CrossFit. I'm not doing that, mm -mm. but go for a walk during the day if you don't normally do that. If you already do, maybe walk a little more or do an exercise routine. I've started trying to do exercise routines with my daughter and um, I'll leave the link to my Fitbit challenge video here, here, wherever it is. And you can see we do a little routine together. I have it sped up and it looks really funny, but um, stuff like that, incorporate your children into it if you have kids, but just get moving, get more activity through the day and make your body want to rest the second you hit the bed. The second you get into bed, your body should be like, oh, good, I'm done. Hopefully it will fight with your brain and say, no, turn off, I need to rest. So <laughs> that is the hope. I do find that when I exercise more during the day, I do sleep a lot better at night. And in general, I just feel better. So that is the final tip in my list. This was nine ways to fall asleep when anxiety keeps you up all night. Let me know in the comments which of these you have tried or will try. Let me know how they work for you or if you have any other recommendations you would love to give to anyone else watching this, because I'm sure there are a lot of other tips out there. Personally, I'd love to hear them because I do still struggle occasionally with falling asleep when my anxiety is being a total jerk that night. <laughs>
Thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel so you can see more, and I will see you guys next week in the next video. Bye. <laughs>